Welcome to this tutorial on how to download Git on your Windows computer. In order to download it, you're going to have to go to git-scm.com slash downloads. And so that's what I've got pulled up here, and we are going to download it for Windows. So in order to download it, all you need to do is come and click on this, and it should immediately start the download. And it automatically picked up on what version of Windows I have. I have a 64-bit Windows. And so it's going to automatically just download that executable file for me. If you are interested in some different versions, you can take a look at the Portable Edition and the Windows Setup. All right, in order to start the install, we're going to go ahead and click on the downloaded file. Once you click that Install button, it's going to pop up in a separate window and ask you if it's OK to make changes to your computer. Go ahead and click Yes to that, and you should have this window now on your screen. So this first part is the public license. You can go ahead and read through it if you want to. I'm just gonna go ahead and click next. And this next window kind of shows a, a few different options that you have when you're setting up your Git. So the first part is asking you if you wanna add a desktop icon. I personally don't find that one super useful, so I'm just gonna leave that one unchecked. But I do like these ones particularly, the Window Explorer integration. Basically what it does is when you're in a file explorer window and you're kind of searching through your documents, you can right click on your mouse and it will pop up with these different options here. So this one, this first one, git bash here, basically will open up a new git bash terminal. And this other one, git graphic user interface, will open up the graphic user interface for git in that specific folder that you're looking in. So really useful feature there. This next one down here is Git LFS, which is large file support. You can read more about that one online, uh, but basically it'll allow you to work more optimally with large files. So that's why it's selected there. These next ones are creating associations with certain files. So when you have a Git repository, it sits as a hidden file in the folder that you're working in, as a .git folder. So this first one will kind of associate that with git. The other one is .sh files, which are script files for bash. And that's another really useful one to automatically put on bash. When you're on your Windows machine, there isn't really a way to run bash scripts unless you use a bash command terminal. So git is a, a perfect way to do that. These other ones are basically just looking for updates. And then there's a new one down here that you can select to get a git bash profile on your Windows terminal. Um, I'm just going to leave those ones unchecked. This next one is pretty important. When you use Git, you often have to use a text editor. And there's a few different ones that you can use. The one that comes pre-installed with Git is Vim. Now, Vim is powerful, but it is hard to use. So I would recommend definitely changing to something you're more comfortable with, such as Notepad++. Uh, I personally like using Notepad. Uh, but there is also a few other ones on there that you can select. So I'm going to go ahead and set that as my default. And one thing to keep in mind here is that you can actually go back and change the settings after the fact. So if you don't want to use the default editor that you set up on the installation, you can go ahead and go back and change that to something that you're more comfortable with when you actually install it or after you had actually installed it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click Next. So this is a newer piece of Git and part of the installation that is actually pretty important. Um, previously, the, the current working branch that you were on would be called master. And that's how Git has always done it. That's how uh, GitHub has also done it. Uh, but in recent years, there's been a push towards changing that to main. Essentially, if you're going to be working with your GitHub account, it might be smart to override the default branch name and make it main instead of master because if you're going to push to GitHub, then it's going to have some issues when you go to merge the two together and it's just easier to maybe override it and say main. Okay. Uh, if you prefer to have Git just do the default of master, you can do that too. Um, either way works just fine. Okay, so this is... Uh, talking about adjusting your path environment. So when you're using the command line, it's just basically going to add that path to your command line. So I'm just going to keep with the recommended and uh, hit next. Okay, the next is the shell secure client. 
Um, it's just basically asking you which one you want to use. You can either use the bundled open SSH um, that just comes with the Git package, or you can use an external one uh, if you click on that option. I'm just going to keep the default as the bundled open SSH. The next is how it's transported on the back end, so using the HTTPS protocols. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and keep that one as well as the default of use the open SSL library. Okay, this is the configuring the line endings and how you want to work that within your Windows system. So um, I'm just going to leave that one as well as the default. Okay, so when you set up Git on a Windows machine, you're actually kind of installing on top of it an emulator of Git Bash because Bash is not the native language of the Windows operating system. So basically what it's asking you to do is decide whether you want to use the min TTY, which is the emulator for Git Bash on Windows, or you could use the uh, default console of Windows. So I'm just going to, again, leave that as the, as the default and click Next. OK, this is to alter the default git pull behavior. Uh, the default is uh, generally fast forward or merge, which is commonly used across you know, many, <clears throat> many different platforms and, and across many different teams. Um, it all just comes down to personal preference. If you are more advanced in git and want to use these different options here, you can go ahead and do that. I'm just going to leave it on the default because that's the most used. OK, they have a new credential helper with the newer versions of Git. And so you can go ahead and just keep that as the default and click Next. OK, so this is a question about if you want to have quicker performance. Um, basically, if you enable the fire, file system caching, it will allow you to uh, have more optimal uh, performance when you're doing git commands and when you're committing things to the repository. I'm going to leave that checked and click Next. Okay, these are the final options and these are just experimental options. So a lot of times what Git does when they're looking to implement new features to Git is they do these experimental options, allow you to uh, work with them, see if you like them. Um, there are sometimes bugs and they'll, they'll kind of specify that here, so just keep that in mind. But, you know, I, th I think from here, you can kind of decide if you want to play with those uh, experimental features, or uh, we'll just leave them unchecked for now and click Install. So this may take a little while, but because it's kind of a lighter weight program, it won't take too long. It shouldn't, shouldn't take hours to install. Um, so go ahead and take a break if you need to and come back to it. Okay, so once it's finished, it's just going to go ahead and pop up with this last little bit. You can go ahead and launch Git Bash if you want to, uh, to launch that virtual terminal that we were talking about. And then it will also show you the release notes. So just to kind of show you what that looks like, I'm going to check both and then click Finish. So you can see it brings me to an HTML page uh, just with the release notes. This is stored on your local drive. Uh, just kind of gives you an idea of what changes and new features they have in the current version and different bug fixes that uh, came with this release. So kind of some helpful information there. And then you should also see this terminal window pop up and you should be able to start using Git. All right, that's it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead and drop us a like and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you at the next one.